old are you? Five. Five? <laughs> yes, that, that is a speaker. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> He's two and a half. <laughs> and this is Charlie, she's a year. I actually grew up in Gridley and um, grew up in Christ Community Church. And then was First United Church of Gridley. And um, attended from seventh grade through high school graduation and made my way back to the central Illinois area in 2019. So we've been attending for about three and a half years. My name is Cody Clyburn, and this is my wife, Frankie. We also have Setson, our six month old son. And um, if you've seen us walk around Gridley, you know that we have a huge dog uh, named Baylor Boy, so. We've been attending Christ Community Church for about four years. Uh, we started attending in t the summer of 2019. Kind of a long story, a God story. I took a leap of faith to move out to Illinois where I didn't know anybody. Um, right out of college, worked in El Paso and was just looking for a home to rent. Looked in Bloomington Normal, Peoria, Eureka, El Paso and then found a little place in Gridley that was just perfect, everything seemed right, and then started looking for a church, Christ Community Church. It was the only church that I tried out and just have loved it ever since then, so. So I moved out in November of 2019 um, just to be with Cody. I was living in Ohio at the time, that's where we're from. Um, and then so when I moved out, we just kept going to Christ Community, so. Started out actually, Andy, I talked to him about some of the things that I struggle with and um, he encouraged me to go to a men's group um, that John Dirks led and Kevin Hitty. Then I was also involved in a D group with four other guys um, and that's been, that was really good for me. Went to mom's group a couple of times, the IF conference uh, for the past three years. I feel like the biggest thing that got us plugged in and helped us get to know people and make friends were the, um, the community groups. From there, then we got to meet other people that they knew, um, since most of them are, are from around here. I felt like after church, we would seek them out and talk to them and mm -hmm. started hanging out after church more. Um, I have really loved being a part of the moms group that meets every other Wednesday. Um, that especially being a young mom and having young kids just knowing that there's that community of women who a lot of times have walked um, and have older kids ahead of you to help guide through sleepless nights or ear infections or any of those things um, we meet and go through a book or do a bible study and that has just been um, a really sacred space relocating from macon i had um, done a time and built a career in higher education and we just had Addie at that point in time but when we relocated back to Illinois I had moved twice we moved to Benson first and then to El Paso um, Addie was a year and a half I was pregnant with Benny and there had just been a lot of change in a short amount of time and when I say that Susan scoped me out, I mean Susan scoped me out, <laughs> like across Coffee Fellowship on Sunday morning. But I don't know if I can ever adequately explain what it means for somebody to really see you and to understand that like you are going through it. Um, I had kind of lost a sense of identity. I had worked so long in um, here's what I know I'm doing in a mission field of working with college students and now I am home with my little girl every day and this looks totally different. Um, and just her partnering with me and reminding me of who God says I am and um, what it means to be a daughter of the King and what it means to have an identity in, in Christ really matters. And I needed that then, I need it now. <laughs> we need it every day, but to have women in the church who really see you and want to help you through that. Um, it's been a godsend in a lot of ways. I 
think about specifically kind of our testimony is that I lived out here in Illinois and Frankie moved out here um, prior to us getting married. So um, just financially and other things, we decided to live together knowing that that was a sin. But also at the same time, we were a part of this small group and community group um, that a lot of them had conversations that you can kind of touch on specifically with Frankie and I um, that really encouraged us to uh, take a different path in that realm of our life and move out. Um, so then I actually moved in with uh, David and Chris Zeller and lived with them all winter and part of the summer until we got married and then moved back in. The small group that we were in uh, was led by Amanda and Brandon Smith. Um, and she and I had some conversations as well as uh, the Fobles with me just about living together and uh, kind of why we were doing it. Um, just in a loving way though, nothing that made me feel intimidated, but just had some hard conversations that really made me think. Also, I just thought that this was pretty cool to find out after the fact, like after we decided on our own terms to, for you to move out just that our small group had been praying for us, like without us knowing that they were praying for us to um, to not live together and just the fact that they were praying for us. They just knew that there was so much more for us as a couple and individually and um, so knowing that meant a lot. In this season, the church has helped to ground us. It has provided a community of support it has been a place where we go and gather on Wednesday mornings or Sunday for service or the prayer meeting and just feel, it's like a second, kind of a second, a second home, or second you know? second family, yeah. So yeah. I tell people no because there's too much um, assistance, which sounds crazy, but they're always there with meals or errands to run for you or whatever you need. That second family community that's really, that's really, uh, changed how we view the church as, as a whole and how it is that true one another That's core true. value that they express very well. Mm -hmm. I feel like someone else that really stands out, I guess to me at least, I would say you would agree, but um, Brian Kurz and just their family really did take us in. Like he would say to me like in the beginning, like we know how it is being outsiders and moving to a new place and not having family. So I feel like they took it upon themselves to um, to really invite us to community stuff, not mm -hmm. even just church events, but other things to get us plugged in. He's He introduced us to a lot of people as well, just to like try to make connections for us. And um, they invited us over to meals and stuff after church along with some other people. So I feel like that's someone that their family really stands out to me of just like really taking us in under their wing. and helping us make connections. So. Mm -hmm. And then also I would say being a part of a D group, discipleship group, um, was really helpful to understand that people that I might have looked at as high and mighty or really godly men that have some of the same struggles that I do mm -hmm. um, was really insightful to me that, that really helped and encouraged me to um, be steadfast in pursuing those struggles and, and getting out of those those sins. I feel like we still think sometimes that we're the new people and we're not. <laughs> um, there's a lot of new people. Yeah. I also want to just give a shout out to the music and the singing. I remember like literally, I remember the first time I had ever went to church with Cody and I remember just like hearing how many people just sang and I, I just remember closing my eyes and like I love music, it's it what it's what speaks to me and um, I just remember closing my eyes and being like this is what heaven is gonna sound like because it's just so loud and people weren't afraid to sing out and mm -hmm. praise and so it's just amazing. I it's one of my favorite things about our church. Great. Um, a characteristic of a healthy church is how many people stick around afterwards for coffee fellowship and that's that was something that initially when I was just attending church by myself. Um, I didn't really participate in. I was kind of a guy that went in at right at 9.30 and left as soon as the sermon was over. Um, but now we, we stick around until the very end. Um, really enjoy that time of um, 
discussion with other Christians after church. Um, <laughs> Baylor, please. Um, one of the other things that I, I, I feel like I have grown and learned so much through in this last year is the power of prayer and the power of community coming together to pray for each other. And that scene on Sunday nights, certainly at the prayer times, but as we walked with the Kurzes and with the Crohn's and just seeing um, the amount of love and care and support, but truly the prayer and petition with thanksgiving for what God has done and what God will do um, is very moving and powerful. And I love being a church, being a part of a church that doesn't just preach the power of prayer on Sunday mornings, but lives it together as a body um, to further God's glory, His will be done. Gaining more Christians, more, more people are being saved um, through that ministry, but also um, the depth of relationship um, between Christians and between um, our hearts to the Lord, um, that those would be strengthened and deepened in the current attenders and, and members in our church. Yeah. I mean, more of the same. I mean, just even more abundantly for the community, one another, but also growing more and more disciples. I think we're already on the right track with the D groups and you know, mm -hmm. equipping that next generation on how to <clears throat> handle the Word of God and how to preach the Word of God and teach others to, to reach the nations. There is a scripture in Mark that talks about um, may they know that we are followers of Christ by the way we love one another. And as I think about like what I hope and what my prayer for this church family is, it's that bonds continue to be created, that we continue to live life with one another, and that love comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes and forms. But as we live life alongside one another, needs are met and anticipated. Um, something even like I think about the McKinsey's and um, being foster families, the um, need for respite care to be able to invest and just give relief um, for those families that want to do kingdom work through um, foster care and adoption is so important. And I would love um, for us to continue to live that out on a daily basis as we live life alongside one another.